Hey, Leonard. Hey, Rob. <laughs> so, Maniac just sent me a great, a great idea. He said, uh, Lenny would be a perfect sumo wrestler. <laughs> Just for fun, a little gag, you know, get the sumo costume on. I was thinking you and you and Big J, just as a little gag, no hatred. A sumo wrestling match. Tell me that wouldn't be the best mens ever. Yeah. That would be incredible. Yeah, it would. And if he doesn't want to do it, there's a sumo club in Florida. I mean, I know you got to focus on Mr. G right now, but uh, it still is some sort of training. And uh -huh. I just like to see in that sumo outfit. <laughs> Yeah, I got the gut. I don't have the size like I used to. I would have been like 15 years ago. It would have been great. So I asked PJ about the Zaza. Uh -huh. I said, hey, Lenny's intrigued about this Zaza that you're talking about on a podcast. I said, is it worth a shot or should we steer clear? And he said, steer clear. Which translates to my head as, ah, oh, it must be yeah. worth a shot. Uh -huh. It must be worth a try. What did he feel like, he said? Uh, I didn't ask him too much, but I was reading on Reddit, a lot of uh, people, there's a whole forum about it on there, and people say, like, don't do it, the withdrawals are the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life, they say, stay away, please don't do it. That's not good. You know, and, and part of me is like, oh, well, okay, we'll just do it once, and then that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. We, we, that never works out. The kids are smoking it like it's cool. Or... I don't know if they really smoke it. They should LeBron James' sons. Smoking it? I'm not supposed to say his name. They did a reaction video of him watching his son smoke it. What? Yeah, it's a good father there, I guess. He can afford real drugs. Why doesn't he do that instead of Zaza? Tyaneptine is what we're talking about. Maniacs. Yeah, yeah. Tyaneptine sulfate. Mm -hmm. We no longer have the P.O. box, so... How come? A certain mailman canceled it. We gotta, we gotta pay for our own, you know. He Why said, did he do that for? He said there's nothing coming there anymore, and it's he's, you know, he pays for it. Nobody else chips in. Oh. I'll message him. Maybe when he comes back, I'll, I'll tell him we'll pay for it if he. Uh, yeah, I got a message for him. What? I understand he's in the windy city of Chicago, which is the meatpacking capital of the world. Yep. Oh, you get the all good Midwestern beef, the best of the best. And he pulls up and goes to a freaking raunchy hot dog joint that's all dolled up with these disgusting hot dogs on a plate. Doesn't he realize all that byproduct of all that good meat, they're using that, buying it dirt cheap, putting some spices in it, charging that thing the markup is unreal and instead of going to a steak nice steak restaurant which i'm sure the prices are cheaper there he goes to that raunchy hot dog joint post instagram pics uh, brad are you kidding me are you freaking kidding me i don't see anything wrong with that that made my mouth water i'll tell you that no, the, the, you, are you talking about he posted the burger with the macaroni on it no that was today it was the hot dog joint oh, um yeah those guys are like i said they're getting the byproducts and all the stuff that's probably gonna be thrown out buying it and making a hot dog out of it and charging 20 times what it's worth Ugh, go to a steakhouse for god's sake probably cheap or something you can get by the store you can buy good quality which ones do you like the natural uh no nitrates they're pretty good uh the uh i don't know if they're there's a kosher them. one that's good yeah do you know what i'm talking about yeah they're they're long they're skinnier yeah they're sort but, of like nate's pencil thick right but at a restaurant i can see it a wrestling match or a game and even the fights sell hot dogs, but a freaking restaurant, it's all dolled up. Come on. Meow Man texts me. I guess he saw Brad's Instagram today. He says he's got to get that dopamine fix. What do you mean? From the, from the booze. That's not dopamine. The booze from is the, more serotonin. Oh, okay. I don't get why everybody... I don't know. I... Imagine every five, six days a week delivering 
fucking mail and this hot, humid heat. Yeah, for that kind of money. Waking up five in the morning and then, you know, take a nice vacation. Who cares what he's eating? He's enjoying himself. Well, he's trying to make us all make the old misfit world envious. Look what I'm doing. Look at this beauty of a woman I got, which you don't have. This big postal salary and I'm life is good and you guys suck. Well, That's what's going through his mind. I know it. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, God. I got to ask you. I can cut this out if, if you want me to, but... Yeah. I was on the YouTube, and you know we share the account. So it said, continue watching Nicki Minaj. Shit it yeah. on him. Were you yeah. watching? No, somebody sent it to me. And what I'm is thinking, it? that's what all the girl, young girls, parents, and young fairies are having... Their parents and their hard-earned dollars to see her sing that with a dildo. Yeah, that's un unfreaking believable. She had a dildo. Yeah, brings it on stage, swings it around. That's sick. Talking about defecation. Her and that other one, Cardi Bill B. Billy Joe Cyrus, oh. is another one with the dildos and something that the pop culture mainstream. Yeah, they want to push that. Even worse is uh, that Cardi B, she's got yeah. a song that's like super popular with even like, my niece knows the words, she's five and the song yeah, is Yeah, the called, niece I met, right? Yeah, the, it's called Wet Ass Pussy. Oh, jeez. It's called WAP, but that's what it stands oh. for. And it's encouraging lesbianism is what it is. I'm sorry I did my part to ruin youth with that little mishap I did a few years ago. Well, I think he showed everybody what not to do. Yeah. Yeah, they go over every filthy sexual thing now for kids. Gays, lesbianisms, defecation. Pretty soon the bestiality and the pedophilia. Well, well pedophilia is there because there's kids under 18 going to their shows, which blows my mind. And then they're going to start, you know, with the animal stuff now, really push it. Yeah. Do you think that agenda to push uh, like the LGBT stuff, do you think that agenda maybe is for a form of population control? Yes. Absolutely. And it's also tied in with the party scene. Who the hell wants to take care of a kid when he can be out partying five or six nights a week? Yeah. And a certain someone won't really nameless, but there's some bisexuality going on there too. I don't mean to spill any beans. <laughs> some, uh, put a hint, give a hint. Well, the person I frequently refer to is the one who remained nameless most frequently. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so. Whoops, the beans are spilled. Unless we get that P.O. box back. <laughs> and I got another text from the Pompa box, Pomps box. <laughs> the only thing that's selling is Jason's pre-workout. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for putting that up while we're trying to sell ours, you asshole. Yeah. And then he's like, I haven't paid for it for a year. I don't know, I forget his website or something, but, you know. Why doesn't, I, I don't understand why he doesn't, he should reach out to me and we should, you know, we work together sounds like a good of, idea yeah instead of having two different websites you yeah know? like the time we we used to go over after work he'd go to Chili's or something yeah, like that yeah yeah and buy me and Rob dinner and we could talk pumps how's that but I'll promote well, he's the, buying he's buying dinner with your profits that's what he's obviously doing. those shirts should be on our total which you know all together with us so don't worry misfitsgear.com Get your latest and greatest. Here. Yeah, or whatever. I don't know. What We're gonna come up is. with some new, uh, some new designs. Uh, our graphic designer guy is busy right now. That's another thing too. Is you know, I, I, I six thousand ideas, but I'm only you know one person. Anybody with any sort of graphic skills or anything that that wants to be a part and help out a little bit, message me on Instagram or email me. Yeah. Um, because uh, you know, I could. I could use the help. I have more ideas than I know what to do with, and 
I don't have the concentration to do graphics and shit myself. Yeah. Our, our guy is great, but he's busy right now doing other things. I'm yeah, gonna take some pre-workout. I, I didn't either, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna dump it in my mouth. Yeah. And plus I got some bronchi. I'm got a freaking, that nerve under my right shoulder blade acted up again. Oh God, that's been bothering me three years. I remember when I started training with you at LA Fitness, on that shoulder press, I'd lock up, be like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Oh, uh, that nerve. Yeah. And that cellulitis attack that I literally want to die. I'm sure Mr. G's tough as nails, being that age and doing all that training and then going out and jogging at that age. Yeah. That's just a different breed. Of course, he's, I mean, I got a ton of muscle mags in storage. And they talk about him when he was in prime or close to it. And man, it was legendary, some of the stuff he used to do. Now, he was a uh, famous personal trainer that also was trained by the great Steve Mahalik, who had the thing in gym in New York called Mr. America's Gym. Yeah. And they used to get UPS shipments. This is in the 70s of all kind of juice right from the straight from the uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers. Oh wow. Because guys would waste the package would come in like every Thursday or something. Yeah. They'd wait, need a sign in sheet and there was a syringe, a pen inside a syringe. And then have like si signs in the gym, message of the day, up the dosage. So it was you know, they had the big class bowl of Diana balls or anabars too. Which a lot of gyms have. People just go in and help themselves. Oh, why don't we recreate that? Have a private gym. <laughs> I don't think that would last. You get a Genova coming in. Yeah. Take, take a thousand. Genova would be like the kids on Halloween where they would just leave the bowl outside and they dump the whole thing. In the <laughs> yeah. uh, did, how about uh, Leo's podcast with Larry Pollock? I love that. Is that his name? Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, that was great. And then I'm, wa I'm watching the one now with uh, Ariel Palumbo. The masturbation? Yeah, yeah. I want to. I'm curious to see, like, you know how they say trend is the relationship ender? Yeah. Obviously, Boston and her, they've been together for what, like eight years, something wild like that? Yeah. I do, you too. Uh, so I wanted to ask him how some of his coping mes uh, mechanisms and. Well, vice versa, apparently, with her, so. Yeah. And then his father and mother were doing it when he was a kid. And buying it from Piana, how wild is that? <laughs> and Piana never getting busted? Yeah. And telling uh, Larry Pollock to come meet him at a gym? It's like, for what all of a sudden? Yeah. You ever see that video Mac Truck put out on Rich Piana? Not to, you know, drag his name through the mud, but he was talking about how uh, he started doing uh, meth. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, it's... Seems like a lot of people on the West Coast, Vegas, yeah. are into that. Big boy. A lot of girls, a lot of strippers. Big boy was doing it? No, but there was some scandal with, I remember Rich Piana's girlfriend, wife's, uh, what was it, Sarah? <coughs> Apparently got like, uh, I don't know, traded meth to, uh, traded uh, Rich's juice to Big Boy for some meth. Like she stole his, some of his juice and traded it for meth. He was pissed. Yeah, you could tell those guys are, you know, with the name Strength Cartel, come on. The Mexican guys out in California, you know yeah. what they're up to. Yeah. Not anymore, of course, but I like that guy's channel. Big like, Boy? Yeah, you ever watch it? Yeah, he's, well, I don't like to because he's so much stronger and still has some athletic ability and can do other things. Well, that's the myth. We, uh, <laughs> we didn't get some then. We saw him at the Olympia because he made a comment that you guys talk too much, the misfits. If you ever came to our gym, you'd be sh you'd shut the hell up or whatever. And so and so, there's two of the people that were with our group that were clinging to me and Jay <laughs> when we went by their booth. He just gave us a look. I gave him a dirty look because I didn't know him that well, but I was aware that he was talking shit. And he turned his head, ignores, but 
two of the smaller guys in our group are clinging to me. Is it Jay and Andrew? <laughs> no, the, the guy that we're meeting with. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All you can see is Cartel and Brad gets shivers down his spine. Watching his videos, he doesn't seem like a. He seems like such a nice guy. Like he wouldn't. We, I guess, the troll made a comment that I would beat the fuck out of him, and I guess he had to make a comment back. Uh, it's like, whatever. What was his comment back? How'd you, how do you know? How'd you find yeah, out? it's. It was his. It was big boy, and I guess so and so showed me. Look what he said. And it, they ever come in our gym talking that shit? It wouldn't last long. I want to go out to California bad, yeah. bad. I know it's horrible right there since it's a blue state, but to be honest, I think like if me and you lived in LA, that would be a perfect spot for us. R bumping into people all different day, having them in videos, I, I think that would be, you've never been there, right, California? No, I always wanted to go. We've loved to have gone in the 80s. I like the scene out there. That was everything. You have to go then. If you never went, I mean, come on, to go see the, the to go work out at Gold's Venice, yeah. that's got to be on your bucket list. Mm -hmm. But, uh. I always used that? to think, we used to think to be a good bodybuilder, you have to move out there. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. The guys would end up homeless because they'd sleep on the beach. And Tom Platt used to do that, live with 40 guys in a room. When he went out there, he used to break up in packages in stores for food, steal for food, like tuna cans. What did they think you need to go out there to do it? Oh, because Weeder was out there, right? Signing guys to contracts? Lousy contracts. Until Vince McMahon got involved with the WBF, Weeder was basically paying guys shit. Until Vince signed all the big, big guys for like six-figure contracts. Weeder got scared, but in the end, he made money off it. By giving everybody money, but yeah, Weeder was very kind of stingy. They got that documentary now. I never saw it yet. Which one? Uh, about the Weeder brothers. They started Montreal. He started mail order courses in 1936. What? Mail order what? Bodybuilding courses in 1936. Holy then he shit. started a little newsletter. Then he started magazines. Then he was doing wrestling magazines, different sport magazines, and got into bodybuilding. Do you miss that, the magazines? Oh, yeah, it was a big, because I used to have a paper route. When I got off the comic books, which my father tolerated a bit. Yeah. Because when I used yeah. to deliver papers, I'd go past the store. Yeah. But all the comic books, I noticed all the muscle mags in the 80s. And as I got older, I ditched the comics and transferred to the muscle magazines. I remember the year was 1983. I got my first Muscle Mag International. It was covering the 83 Olympia. I thought, wow, this is great. You know, it's, I got addicted to it. And then Flex and Muscle and Fitness. Flex had just started. And then that was the shit in the 80s until VHS came out. Yeah. Everybody. I remember guys trading me. I'd bring, I'd get it in the mail. I'd bring new Muscle and Fitness to school. And guys would trade me like bodybuilding books or whole cans of protein powder just to get that new issue of muscle and fitness. Holy shit. But I threw a lot out when I moved down here and I threw a lot of mags out so if I would have kept them all I would have kept quite a good collection. With all due respect to our buddy Leo we want to do a new Instagram challenge. Tag yourself we're going to see who can do Leo's lap the best. We'll start with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this. Uh, you know, Boston, I'm sure that would be something you would do. <laughs> the Ariella would say, yeah, I did trend, and in the last two weeks we added master on. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little gag, Leo. <laughs> Yeah, that is a unique laugh, I'll say that. It's a great podcast, so. Always was, always was. Larry, that's a scary story, being in that, be a prisoner. Yeah. And having to break out and the dogs barking. And then the guys are like, should we get the police? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, that's a wild story. That's funny. not fed, kicked. What was he? Hog tied, hands behind his back, and his legs up. Ugh. It's like when you're in con like that, you're saying to yourself, "God, please get me out of this situation, please." You ever, you ever be held prisoner like that? Oh no, I was. I had a few guns pointed at me. What? Yeah. When? Fucking around in the nineties. Oh, this, this... I had guns pulled at me three times. The... I was over a girl's house and. Four guys come over, put guns on me. I'm inside the house, second floor, in Cherry Hill neighborhood of Boynton. And she's like pleading, just let him go, man, trying to fight him and stuff. And they're like, fuck you, get some money out of him. Dude. Holy shit. So we're gonna fucking kill him. Man. Jeez. Yeah. Like a couple crunches to get the abs worn up. All right. Get that nerve down and then do some delts. All right. <laughs> Let me see. People are actually commenting that your shins healed up. They're healing, but they're gonna break again. Yeah. If I get a calf pump, they break. I texted Aladdin and I said, "Hey, I don't want to bother you for, during your prep, but I just want to say great luck for the show. I hope you, I hope you do great. Nothing, no response." Well, he's probably. I hope the DNP is out of his system. The what? DNP. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta check up on him. When is it? The 31st? Yeah. Well, I can't get mad at that. He's a busy guy. God, God knows what type of things he's got going on, you know? Yeah, he has not a second to waste with him. Yeah. doing a traditional behind the neck. And guess what? Brad's out there in Chicago eating gourmet hot dogs while oh I'm, in, I'm in the Wendy's drive-thru. Yeah, craft, shit. craft beer. Ugh. 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 Bring it back that old school maniac intensity right there. So they're going to 275. He knows he's got to get at least four. seen one heavy press out of the both of you. Why is that? one of the best exercises. Dell trap tie-ins for bodybuilding. Pumps them up. Always get them. Yeah, Maniacs, uh, I apologize, I'm not getting the whole workout on film today, but since we upped the intensity, it's hard to, even after a set, I, I can't fucking think. Hard to, to hold, your hold your phone. Yeah. That's how it should be, Maniacs. You should be so fatigued, heavy weight and reps. It is difficult holding the phone. Anybody in the South Florida area that maybe wants to come and uh, train with us and maybe, or, or just film us if you're a pencil neck who doesn't lift. Particularly Dale Chance. I like to show him what intensity was at 
I did it before. He slacked off. He bucks the weight up on Rose. You destroyed him yesterday. I'll be destroying <laughs> him next week. And who's the well-rounded athlete now, Mr. Semi-Pro linebacker? Who's the semi-pro linebacker? Damn. Dale. Oh, shit. Just like to know it was a semi-pro UFC MMA fight. I think Dale's fucking KP Fitness up. <laughs> it's funny, KP of the weird energy, but some more reps. Yeah. Come on, KP. I want to see you at next off season at 240. Can you do it? I'd like to see it. 240. Let him loose, Cornelius. Let him loose. He's a pro now, right? Is he? He's got his pro card? Yeah. Wow. Good for him. Don't want to get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. At your height, 212. If Sean Clarita could do it, and he's barely five feet tall, yeah. KP can do it. Think of my water bottle, look. It looks like a giant banana. We speak cannabis. Uh-oh. It also looks like a sex toy and can be used as a weapon. Well, yeah. <laughs> Not that you hit someone like a... Set that solid. Wow, she's in incredible shape, huh? You ready? Yeah. All right, I'm going to name this movement the Zilla Press. After Rob Zilla, the first time I was oh, doing it. Oh, God. <laughs> After destroying, look at the oh. pump in his delts. Ah. There's the whole machine. Uh, I don't know if I can do it on this Slide one. the weight. I don't know if this one goes that high. Oh. That's good. Uh, tension, tension. Uh, Look at that pump. Uh, 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 Perfect. It's all fight. You can get in there after you do your basics and go to town. Because every the support system's fatigued. You can continue to push the muscle to failure, and Zell is a stickler for the compound basics, and it shows. It's, that makes you athletic when you do compounds. Oh, God, I can't breathe. What asshole? I think it was a, gen well, it was a gentleman I want to call, 954, he left a text said that I failed us and said some things. So I want to know if we could do a live call with him, just him in particular. Yeah, call him. I think he's a little inf misinformation. He says, you can read my text aloud. Okay, I'm, I'm taking orders from you now. Yeah. We're going to call you and see if you got the balls to respond. That's about it. Clear up some misinformation here. You want to call him now or in the car? Yeah, we'll call him. He was a huge fan. The party you are trying to reach is unavailable. Oh, figures. Someone will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you. Hey, this is Big Lenny. You call me back. We'll get you on the air. You want to have a little talk? Okay. I'll put the phone on. Hopefully he'll call back. Rob, I used to love when I get up in the morning, like seven, take a piss, take a teaspoon of Fenabut, go back to sleep. Yeah. It would knock me out and I wake up buzzed. Yep. It's a shame. I, I miss that shit too. I used to. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna place an order. I think I did one on the phone. Uh, always, my, my little videos, I was doing Fenabut, but it's, again, it's like Kratom. I don't do that more than 
once a week. Although for the regular maniacs out there, Kratom once a week and Fenibut once a week. Great performance benefits, especially if you want to get a lot done. And on the Fenibut, you want to take a little more than average so you don't get the sleep effect, you get the stimulant effect. Oh, you think the more, the more stimulating? Definitely. And I noticed when it, I would take the two days off on a week or Monday and Tuesday when I used to defend about two or three years straight. I noticed once it eased out of my system, that's all I wanted to do was sleep. I mean, I would, uh, I had all my food prepared like at work and I would, my, I'd be in bed all day. I didn't even want to do my laundry. Matter of fact, I went out, and this is before we started doing the videos, I saw Brad at Publix when I wasn't taking Fenibut for that one or two days. And I did not, I was like a zombie. You know, Brad was a nice guy. This is way, way back in the day. I remember, and you know what? Because of listening to the podcast, I bought Fenibut and tried it. Yeah. And then I was doing the same thing. And then I would see those videos where I could tell yeah. it was your off days. And I was like, man, these guys have no idea how he feels right now. And he's still attempting to be funny. But you know what, Rob? It's like when you do the research on it, and then when they point out a side effect, you start noticing more. Yeah, yeah. Which sucks. Yeah. It's probably with a tie and Eptine, if PJ didn't yeah. uh, badmouth it so much, we'd be in tie and Eptine heaven right now. <laughs> tie and Eptine, boy. Mm. <laughs> but I'll tell you what sucked. I like, you know, his company and everything like that, but one thing to call Euphoria, that sucked every time I used it. Never tried. And he gave me, comp oh my God, it actually makes you feel like shit. I don't know. I do not understand it. It's a... PEA. Yeah, PEA. Fennel some, fennel some It sucked. I remember. I, I I heard you talking about that on the podcast. And oh, I, God. I looked up the ingredient and I ordered the active ingredient uh, raw uh, and it's it was horrible. I didn't notice yeah, anything it. From sucked. It. Um, it fucking uh, sucked. But with the Fenibut, oh man, the first time uh, I remember I, I did like two whopping scoops. Uh, and I didn't feel anything. So. Not even hours later? Well, well that, that's the point. I didn't know that it took five hours to kick in. Yeah, your first so time, I your fuck brain doesn't know what to do. I just kept taking it, taking it, oh. and then holy shit, I felt like I was on an ecstasy pill. I was on Facebook at the time, and I started writing, I started posting, I love everybody, <sighs> exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Yeah. Um, but at the time, I was so depressed, it... Because of it, other circumstances? Yeah, it... Uh, it really got me out of my shell and I had like the best couple months of my life at the time like I was just so I would be like in the gym just so happy talking to everybody talking to every girl that yeah. I saw um, your productivity is incredible you want to get up and speak in front of people it's like when you go in a room you're the center of attention not the other way around yeah yeah and you know what me being off so long and you were gonna try it it's good to give it a try and those are things I recommend for performance enhancement, just keep it to a minimum, one, two days a week. Maybe that in a kratom, because you don't want to get withdrawal or negative feedback. No, that's the mistake I made. Is you know I like something. It's like oh well, you know if it, if I felt good on it today, might as well take it today before I go here. Before I go, and then I take it every day. But uh, yeah, and taking. I remember waking up the next morning after that first day and yeah. just like. I, felt, I still felt amazing. I was throwing up because I took so much. But Yeah, I've done that quite a bit on that. And I was doing flooring at the time. And uh, my boss, my boss was, I was making him laugh and I was being funny and stuff. But he's like, why the fuck are you wobbling all over the place? <laughs> and he's like, he left me alone to do a carpet job by myself. And it took me like, all, he came back like six hours later and there was barely anything done. I was just, you know, calling girls and shit all day. <laughs> <laughs> And he, he Well you're calling him to come over and lay, lay the carpet for you, right? Well yeah, but he, <laughs> but uh we were doing a, a carpet job at a at a, a golf a country club. So the country club owner came in and called him and he's like, I think this guy's sneaking behind the bar and drinking alcohol. 
<laughs> and yeah. man, the boss called my was friends with my father. Called my father, and he's oh. like, "Yeah, he's here. He's fucked up." Oh man. So, but they can smell the alcohol in your breath, so you just get here. Huh. There was no alcohol. That's yeah. the last thing I wanted. Yeah. So I mean, Patrick Arnold brought that back. The guy that developed most of the pro hormones. Butt? Yeah, and I heard like I saying they cram college students cramming for tests. You can retain stuff on it and music. You know, music, I'm partial yeah. to the '70s rock. You know, this is an old Fleetwood Mac, which I used to listen to in my mother's car in the '70s. Sounds great. Yeah. Can't wait to try it again. I better I keep saying I'm gonna order, but I could do it for you tonight if you want. Okay. There's now there's a new kind. There's a F dash Fenibut, which kicks in immediately. Huh. You but you got to take like ten times less of a dosage, like two hundred fifty milligrams. And it doesn't last as long. No, it does. It seems like the capsules, they work for me a couple of times, but I was usually the powder work. Here's the thing: there, with the powder, most people don't know this. There's phenobut hydrochloride, yeah. and then there's phenobut free amino acid. The free amino acid is like ten times stronger. Yeah, I remember you got me that. It was great. You, huh. you like lift mode the best. At the time, yeah. That was the only one I tried. Yeah, Prima Force used to sell it. Then I'd start getting the runs from it, so I would take it like a slice of bread. I would swallow with water, the Fenibut, eat a slice of bread, and then drink some orange juice or eat, eat an orange for the vitamin C and citric acid to bring it across the blood-brain barrier. Huh. But at one point, Donnie at the muscle store was basically giving me the shit. Yeah. Because the owner was up in Pennsylvania. My God, I used to take 10 tablespoons per day. I, 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 I go through two cans or two of these jars a week. I don't know how the hell. That was insane. 10 what? Grams a day? Easily, yeah. Yeah, I was doing like seven, yeah. But now since it's so much out of my system, I should get a good benefit. You know, get my ass going. The confidence on that and the Derek, intelligence. Derek more plays more dates used to take it, he said, for, for picking up women two days a week. Yes, and been just talking and being a salesman, I can see it working great. Yeah, I was taking it when I was doing car sales. But um it was just making me real horny with the Yeah, the, yeah, the oh office, man. Office girls there. Yeah. Oh man, tell me about it. I don't think I ever got my well, no, I definitely did, but there's a different, like there's like a, a testosterone, trenbolone type sex drive, and then I feel like the G Fenibut sex drive is different, you know? Yeah. The test is more you want to, you know, just ram, ram something. The other one is more mental. More licking. You want to ah, lick. Ah, more know? submissive. The, the Fenibut, the GHB, yeah. you want to do more like freaky shit. Yeah, Molly. Test and trend, you just want to bend her over and... But if you're on all of it, which we were, you could see the results in Miami. Yeah. Wouldn't be a bad idea to do once a week. Yes, be a great idea. I'd let you hold it because I don't trust myself. Right. Once a week, as an alternative to alcohol, you know? Yeah. Just a way to go out and socialize, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but sometimes some people take Molly, they they want to do everything in the kitchen sink. Well, I'm not talking about <laughs> Molly. Yeah. I don't think you need it. If you have no tolerance to Fenibut, uh, Fenibut, I, I think, would be a little bit... I agree. It's I wouldn't definitely say better. comparable. I, I, sometimes it was better. Yeah. So, it surely was sometimes. It's not as insane, intense. And sometimes the Kratom was, too. Yeah. Uh, but I know some of you Manics are drinking on a nightly basis. Not good. Not good for you, anything. It really destroys oh. brain cells. That's considered a poison, period. Yeah. End of story. Fenibut, GHB, things like that are in your system already. Right. You know, because at the, at the time, I was prescribed Vyvanse, which is... Yes, I've tried it. Yeah, which is Adderall, but it, it lasts all day. Uh -huh. Um... And I was prescribed that from 19 to like 25. So at some, your dopamine and serotonin are like this, right? So when you raise one, the other goes down. Yeah. So the stimulants are raising your dopamine so much that your serotonin's going down. So I started to become almost like 
very awkward. I was always, you know, with the Bob Swag stuff, that's that's the opposite of shy. Yeah. You know, I was always very outgoing and stuff, and then I started to become very introverted. And the Fenibut kind of balanced me out. So I had the energy and the, the, the focus from the Adderall, but I still felt like the serotonin, the outgoingness. The, yeah. But I've imagined you've experienced some hellish anxiety, haven't you? Yeah, especially coming off of that or coming off of benzos. Oh, man. Oh, and I heard that's horrible. I've only tried those three times. It was good. It was relaxing. Worst thing. It was like ketamine to me. Yeah. But, again, not something I would seek out. I would, if anyone out there, you really have anxiety problems and you're, de you're debating benzos, if you're going to do something do the Fenibut over the, because the Fenibut gave me everything I was looking for by do I was doing the benzos thinking it would you know make me have no anxiety so I'd be more social but it just the benzos are such a downer that uh -huh. it's like you feel relaxed but you don't want to do anything or talk to anybody you know yeah. so the Fenibut gives you kind of like some energy and the, the anxiety the, killing things the so. anxiety. Well, and the GH release I was I was shredded on that yeah yeah, I was reading that the other day, a new article. I was like, damn, what the fuck? I didn't get that shit. I was drinking, uh, I was drinking at the time, too. Like, at night, I would go out and have, like, 10 beers, 15 beers, wake up with a six-pack still. Yep, GHB, too. That's for sure. I mean, I noticed since I haven't taken GHB or 1.4 since April, I've noticed a difference in my physique, and it shouldn't be like that. I'm doing much more cardio now, go figure. Right. Rob, did you know any of those... Whippet sniffers or uh, uh, her, computer cleaner inhalants. I there was a lady, a blonde in her 40s, sitting across from the hospital on the grass in a bikini with freaking a computer cleaner inhalants, ugh. sniffing away. No, I never tried that. Almost naked when I was driving to work one day in an afternoon. That was real big because I remember I was at Circuit City one time and they said that they could, people come in all the time and steal them and run out. It's like, what the hell does that do? Yeah. Computer cleaner. Yeah, it was in a spray. There was a, a like a small group of kids in my high school that were into all that shit. Like all the kids that uh -huh. were, they were like hippie type of kids. They would do nitrous. They would get balloons filled yeah. with nitrous and suck on them and shit. And ketamine. I never was into that stuff. Uh, they got a lot of ketamine clinics down here. I see. Yeah. <laughs> I think the next leg may like a ride in Congress. I think so. So, yeah, now they have the F Fenibut, which is real strong, but you know someone's going to hear this and then they're going to go buy it. I just, I can't stress it again. Don't take it two days in a row. Yeah. It'll ruin you. Yep great in the short term but coming off of that shit oh man yeah i was definitely addicted to doing that with a minute to now we can go the other way we, we passed it that's okay uh now fenibut kratom and a stimulant like adderall or something you'll feel like you're on fucking top of the world and that's wow. you know that's what i was did you sweat a lot on Fenibut? Yeah. I was dripping every, every, I was working also, I was taking it while I was working at the medical marijuana uh -huh. grow house in uh, Connecticut. And uh, we had to go in there and change into like scrubs and stuff. So I would go through like three outfits in a day. Shh, nobody asked any questions? They did. They were like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I was drenched, dripping sweat. But it's also those rooms are, are kept at high humidity for, um, yeah. The, the plants grow yeah like certain rooms like the vegetative room it's called when a plant is in a certain like uh, uh young basically before it starts flowering they yes. kept, they kept the humidity high in there so i mean you're gonna sweat but yeah i've heard of some people that remain nameless to take better care of their baby plants and their own children uh-oh <laughs> i noticed i used to do those snots out of my nose a lot on fenobot I really had a lot of mucus draining out of me, which is good. Yeah. I'd do a set and just, that that was on Fenibut. I don't know why it caused that, but 
I'm glad it did because it kept it from staying in the lungs. You know what I don't like about Fenderbilt though is that you do get kind of queasy on it and a yes. little dizzy. I don't like the air with the restless legs sometimes. Where do you think that's from? Uh, probably too much dopamine. Yeah, yeah. They just, you know, I remember a lot of crackheads and a lot of methods, they scratch themselves because they feel like they're like insects crawling through their skin. And they'll scratch their skin off. They'll bite themselves. I remember a lot of crackheads sit in the car like this. Let's go, we're gonna pull over. I need to suck that dick right now, boy. Did they go down the right one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a nice dog. That was a nice plumper. Should have took a, you guys would have liked that. Big tit, big thighed Spanish girl, very heavy. 300 pounds. What are you, are these, are these apartments any good? I would say no. Probably Mold Central. You know, they were built, looks like in the 70s. Yeah, they look. They can the really same. cram them in there. They look like the same as my building, that type of. Yeah, 70s, 80s. Isn't that nasty? They never cleaned the HVAC system since. No, they didn't know about that shit until massive amounts of ER with unexplained symptoms. I'm glad you brought that to light. I'm getting better now, and I mean. What do you we, think of the frankincense? No, no, because, well, when I went to that, that doctor in Boca, she diagnosed me. What it's called is mast cell, um, mast cell disease or mast cell syndrome. So we have something called mast cells in our body, which, I don't know, they're related to the immune system. And if, if uh, you know, they're out of whack, yeah. they take everything as a threat and, you know, your body starts attacking itself. Yeah. And it's just, your immune system is like a, a thousand times overreacting to everything. So uh, I saw her about, I want to say like 20 times that month. Remember every day I would go to the, go there and then come pick you up? Yeah. I want to say I saw her about 20 times, 20 yeah. sessions. And uh, she had a whole treatment protocol. And ever since I've been feeling uh, much better. Good, honestly. I noticed you've had less issues as far as I don't talk about it as much, right? Well, that's good. Because sometimes, when you, if you focus on stuff, which is why I don't like reading side effects of things I take, because even if you don't have them, oh yeah, I do have it, and then you get fuck, mentally fucked. Yeah. It's just oh. like all the negativity in life. You gotta, you gotta stay away from it and try to exempt yourself from it. Yeah, it was a very, very, very strange thing, and everyone says, oh, it's in your head, but well, you know when there's something that you you can't you can't like right you can't psych yourself out of it yeah. and never sell that to somebody because you don't know what they're thinking no you know people don't walk in your other people's shoes exactly you could say something hey you're a cookie cutter that's fine good if somebody's exhibiting cookie cutter behavior but again and there's a few of these maniacs out there how is rob being a cookie cutter when he's in their neighborhood with their girls being the star of their show, eating their lunch when he's 18 years old. Now, some of you clowns are in your 20s and 30s aspiring to be that. That's a little cookie cutter. Yeah. You still pounding in 30 some minutes? Yeah. That's awesome. No wonder you're so smart. You want to be smart, eat eggs, whole eggs. Well, I'm drinking them. Yeah. I mean, I lived with a Haitian family once, and they didn't even refrigerate their eggs. They had them in a cup. No, most countries don't. Here. That's where the salmon elements come from. Think so? Where's the freaking omega milk at? Up top. No, they sold out. Oh. Don't you get the Fair Life sometimes? Yeah, the Fair Life Omega 3s. Oh. And. Well, the there's the chocolate one with Omega 3. Yeah. I...
up. What's your favorite go-to hot dog? <laughs> the Hebrew Nationals. Yeah, these look pretty good. The all natural Hebrew Nationals. I think I'm gonna try to juice all those. Look at the price on these. These are two for eight bucks. Gotta stock up. Better than Brad paying $16 a, a dog. <laughs> I can't believe it upsets you. Yeah, I'll try those next time. But when you see steak or meat, protein. What do you do with those? You... I'll eat those with uh, my noodles. I'll just eat two packs. It, all Holy, natural. look at all the milk. <laughs> yeah, I go through a couple of those, <laughs> one or two a day. That's the thing I cut out before a contest. Milk? Yeah, milk. But you gotta drink it. Can, what do you think when people say milk is for babies? Arnold said it. Oh, Arnold. Hey, Arnold, what'd you weigh at 6'2? <laughs> 230? <laughs> so, when are you gonna unveil your sushi? I heard you're quite a uh, sushi expert. I did it once. You do have a license, <laughs> which you need in the state of Florida. Wait till they get to 990 $9.99 a pound rib eyes. Hey, how's it going, brother? I'm good. Gonna grab some salad. Maybe it's time for you to get a new phone. What do you think? New, new number too. Yeah, I'm told it's an upgrade. Well, I don't want. I don't want my fans to. Well, yeah. It's a nice little cutie. Uh, I like all the interaction with the fans so much. I don't, because uh, you don't answer your phone as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I got an Instagram, you know. Okay. We got chocolate pecans. I think it would have been more fitting for Dale and Cornelius to be called the Pecan Boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if we ever decide to get on stage, and I hope it's next year, they will be dwarfed. Cornelius got a big back, but ours, especially with your deadlifts, there's just so much more meat you can put on your frame. I mean, what the hell? We have best source of selenium on Earth, Brazil nuts. Helps sexual function. We have, you know, you have NB Major League Baseball genetics, I have NFL genetics. <laughs> I like Cornelius. Yeah, I do too. I like the way he talks. Yes, he's very, he's a very cerebral person. He reminds me, I mean, he's what the Germans call the heron frog or whatever, the Superman. Huh. He, he reminds me of the typical Nazi Superman, super soldier, Cornelius. That's what they tried to do. That's why they developed testosterone from sharing laboratories. Test and meth go to war. <laughs> Makes sense, don't it? It does. And there, today, you know, people are doing tests and Adderall, same yeah. thing. When they told, we're going to invade Russia, and you know how cold it gets, 80 below sometimes? Guys were like, yeah, signing up like crazy. Because oh they get their shots. Or the pills that are called Pervitin. We need a, we need a, a sponsorship from Pervitin. Pervitin for the perverts. <laughs> yeah, that was... That's what he reminds me of, really. You know, I think he should be.
They should make him the Red Skull in the Captain America movies. Paint his face red. He's already got the bald head, the muscular body. Doesn't that make that makes perfect sense? Yeah. I think he's Irish or something. Like, is he Scottish? Something like that. Saline, saline cuties. <laughs> Imagine you and her eating these naked, <laughs> eating out of different parts of her body. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> she likes how the citric acid burns her genitalia. I don't think there's anyone else on the planet who picks up a bag of oranges and thinks like that. <laughs> when I see this, I think of Mr. Masterson. Oh, no. I promised him we wouldn't mess with him anymore. I'm not messing with I'm giving him a compliment. This is a Masterson banana. I think that's a chance banana. <laughs> that's a KP fitness banana. <laughs> what the hell's that, a dragon fruit? You know that Beetlejuice character in Howard Stern? Yeah. Uh, his manager, they were, like, they were on tour or something and they were getting Chinese food. Yeah. And he's like, hey, B, you want to, uh, they got dragon chicken. He said, nah, I don't eat dragon. <laughs> <laughs> he gets paid, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a millionaire. Because of the movies he was in. You know how much, one little part in uh, Bubble Boy, yeah. he got like 30 grand for that. Or, or was it Scary Movie? Uh, scary Movie 2, he had a small little part, he got like 30, 30 grand. You think if we went to Los Angeles, our chances would increase for that? Absolutely. Those are the talent agency? That's why I mentioned it. Yeah, you would get a part in a movie, I feel like, like this. Like a horror movie, you know? You know what I would like to do? I'd like to be, because uh, I'm Polish, and then make an Iceman movie, Ted Kuklinski. Huh. You see with his beard, his... Yeah, like yeah. Dad, you, to me, would be a great Viking. Yeah. Or something in, uh, like, the new Hobbit. <laughs> Brad's going to play the Hobbit. <laughs> I think, uh, no, I won't even say his name. Okay, thanks, Will. That's it? Swing by the deli, I'll see if there's anything good. Yeah, anybody with some uh, connections in the movie world? I think that that would be uh, brilliant for you to do. Yeah. Easy. And, and the stuff we're doing now, even though we're acting like dopes, it's just practice getting, being comfortable behind the kit. You've already had it, but that's the number one thing I think that keeps people from acting is they're scared to be on camera. And we're so comfortable, you know? But I'm getting uncomfortable because I haven't been ooey and gooey in front of the camera <laughs> in a while. <laughs> and that fight's going to be ooey and gooey, Whoa. too. Oh, they got some pretty girls in there. Yeah, they do. <laughs> um, well, remember what we talked about, the arm, the armpit? The, yes. So make, plan a date, and we'll go do it. That's where we need to bring Brad along to Wilton Manors. You got the leather daddy. You know, have him dress up in that, which they, they send him leather, too. He's got a whole outfit, too. Huh. Get him a big cigar. Some assless chaps, he can walk around like that. He already has them. Uh, hey, they serve alcohol too down, down there, Brad. You have to come along. In fact, you guys DM them. Say, start shooting some videos with Rob Zill and Lenny like the old days. He will once he's Give back. Give him a DM, maniacs. Once he's back, I guarantee you he will. After all, he is Brad to the bone. <laughs> did Pumps ever make a TV show with us? Yeah, he did. Jay Masters. First time we were at Bradford Manor together, he bought me 20 of those Parm Crisps. 20 of them? Yeah, 20 bags he gave me. How'd he get those? I don't know. 
Oh, maybe he was keto at the time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they didn't make farms. He wasn't keto, but he was keto at the time. No, no. Always good to have, if you're balking or not training for a show, always have some public fried chicken on hand. It's probably some of the best fried chicken you can get. Yeah. Dave, I'm sure, gets it too. He's got Publix up there. We need to go up there. Yeah. Well, if you could... Tra but th that doesn't make sense. You can only travel those three places. Easy. I want to go to Tampa. I want to go see... Uh, I mean, it's, what, what they really fucking, do I got a bracelet on me? Or are they going to no. cover me with satellites? No, but the thing is, you... The littlest thing happens, you get pulled over and you're out of, then you, you go straight to jail. Oh, even if, well, for what though? Pulled over for nothing? For anything. Yeah. That is true if we were, because see, I don't know when that's going to stop because he's telling me all this. Ridiculous. Oh. He's saying, who my, uh, who do I, who do I check in with? I said, nobody. I didn't even have to. They told me to go home. Originally, I said $1,000 for bail, but when I went to the electronic hearing with the other prisoners, when I came up, they're like, go home, sir. Enjoy Easter dinner. <laughs> Next week, Weekend, Aladdin at the Canadian Nationals. He's ripped. Looks better than ever. Watch out for it. 31st? Yes. It's either Saturday or Sunday. I'll check in with him. Awesome. Canadian Nationals. Big time. Sun coming from the west. Yeah. Is the strongest of all day. I don't know why. And it hits you at that angle. Huh. Brutal. You think the worst part of the summer is over or to come? It goes so fast. You're only looking at then they'll start saying hurricane warnings and you know, all that bullshit. Yeah. But we're out, you're looking at August, September. The uh, hottest, the heat stops the second week of, it gets cooler the second week of October. All right. So you got August and September and how fast it goes. But they'll start hurricane BS. Yeah. We just want to lock everything down again. So we'll have to go to Bradford Manor. That's all. Yeah, he's north. Yeah. And remember, capitalism works. Start a business. Invest your money. Go out and spend your money on smart things. You can spend stuff on cookie cutter things if you have the money because it does help the economy. So as much as I talk about the fancy cars and the fashions, that's what makes the kind of country work. Ooh, look at the fishnets. I love fishnets. Get a... Ooh, and they're Reminds me of the old trap. You want me to help you? Yeah, if you don't mind throwing it on the table out there. Yeah. I'll grab the rest. Oh, your gloves. 